Hello students, in this video we're going to analyze a circular helix. Let's consider a curve, gamma of t, which is r cosine of at i hat plus r sine of a t j hat plus b t k hat. For t between 0 and infinity. Now if we look at the x and y component of this curve, if that's my x and if that's my y and if that's my z, we can notice that x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared and that tells us that the curve, this curve, lies on a cylinder. And what happens as t increases is that the z component increases, so the curve, the shape we get is we have a circle of radius r in the xy plane. There's the x axis, the y axis, and the z axis. And what we have over here is if we draw this cylinder, so there's x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared, and if we extend this cylinder up, So, we know that our curve has to lie in this cylinder, and so in particular, if we plug in t equals zero, we're at the point r i hat zero, zero. So we start over here at this point in the x-axis, and then I increase and I move around the circle. So I'm going to increase and move up. And so this shape spirals around, or encircles around the cylinder, and so we call this curve, the curve gamma, gamma of t is a circular helix. Now, what we'll do is we'll analyze the circular helix by putting it into arc length parameter. So let's put the curve into arc length parameter. So what we'll do is we'll compute gamma prime of t. So gamma prime of t will be negative r a sine a t i hat plus r a cosine a t j hat plus the derivative of this will just be b k hat. And so now if we find the magnitude of this, so the magnitude of the derivative or the speed of this curve is going to be the square root of negative r a sine a t squared plus r a cosine of a t squared plus b squared. And we see that these two terms are going to simplify over here to the square root of, we'll have an r squared a squared and r squared a squared times the quantity sine squared plus cosine squared. So we'll have an r squared a squared plus b squared. So in other words, this curve has constant speed. So this is a constant speed curve. And so to put it into arc length parameter, we note, of course, that s, the arc length parameter, is the integral from, say, 0 to t of the speed of the curve, gamma prime of u du. And so this will simplify just to t times the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared. And there it tells us that t will therefore be equal to s over this quantity over here, r squared a squared plus b squared, and so if we reparameterize our helix, we'll have gamma of arc length parameter, gamma of s, is equal to r cosine of a t, so it's going to be a s over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared. And then we'll have, that's the i hat term, plus r sine a s over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared. That's my j hat. And then my k hat term will be b s over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared k hat. And now in particular, this allows us to compute the unit tangent vector. So if I do the unit tangent vector, of course, that's t hat of s. And t hat of s is going to be the derivative of this with respect to s, the derivative of gamma with respect to s. This, of course, is d by ds of gamma, 
with respect to arc length parameter will be what? Well, we'll have this term over here that's going to come outside. So we're going to have a negative r a over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared times the sine of a s over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared. That's my i hat. Plus, I'll have an r a over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared cosine of a s over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared j hat. Plus, this will be a constant b over the square root of r squared a squared plus b squared k hat. So this is the unit tangent vector. And we can easily check this is a unit tangent vector by squaring. So if I square this term over here and this term over here and add it to this term squared, I see that I'll get 1. So if we want to find the curvature or torsion of this, we'll have to compute a higher derivative. So if I was to take the derivative of this, the curvature vector is the derivative of the unit tangent vector with respect to s. And the curvature, the scalar curvature, is just going to be the magnitude of this curvature vector. And after doing a calculation, you'll see that the curvature of this curve is a constant. The constant will be on r, a, and b. But helices, in particular circular helices, are curves that have constant curvature. And by computing another derivative and doing a cross product, you'll see that helices also have constant torsion. In general, a generalized helix is a curve for which the ratio of curvature and torsion is constant. We won't cover those in this class, but they're an interesting class of curves. Thank you very much.